a gravel is, you know, we've tried. community-oriented meetings that way. The community can get involved with the police department, and I think it'll hurt, or I think it'll help both of us uh, with, with understanding law enforcement and understanding what's going on with our community. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let my eyes back because y'all are getting it right. First thing I'll do is introduce myself. I'm Steve Whitlock. I'm the police chief. <laughs> I thought you were going to do shot set, but you didn't do it. Oh, you're going to, okay. Well, I know most of them. Yeah. <laughs> this is Cliff. He's a little tipsy here. Cliff Shreve. Lawrence Edwards. He's an investigator. Terry Moses. She's a, uh, she's a police officer. Terry Moses. Uh, she's a police officer. Terry Moses. 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 She's a police uh, the relationship with the community and the police department was not too hot. I'm thinking the last two years we've kind of changed that, that feeling toward the people and us is what we're trying to do right now and probably trying to do in the last two and a half years. So, but we want to get out here and get involved because y'all see a lot more stuff than what we do. Y'all can bring stuff to us that we don't see. And I'll go ahead and tell you, we, we, need, we need to communicate. And I'm fixing to say something nasty I know that people don't like, but I don't like Facebook. <clears throat> and the biggest thing I hate to see on Facebook, do we know what's going on here? How do I get in touch with the police department? Uh, somebody just shot somebody over here on Facebook. What do we do? So I, can, I, can assure, you a message. I can assure you right now, I don't see it on Facebook. I'll be, I'll be truthful and say, they probably do, but I don't. But what we've got to get in this, this community in mind is we can go, we have a 911 system here in Granville. It goes through Coweta County, but we need to use it. The taxpayers here in Granville pay the Coweta County commissioners good money to use their 911 system. And I know everybody likes Facebook. I'm, I'm proud of you, whatever. And I, 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 you know, keep using Facebook. But anytime you need a police department, you know, if you don't know the non emergency number, call 911. You know, There'll be somebody get on the phone if they're rude to you, let me know, we'll straighten them out. But 99% of the time, if you call 911, they're going to get back in touch with us and let us know what's going on. That's what we've got to do. So, uh, we keep having people coming. I appreciate that. Uh, I won't lie to you, this is the coolest I've seen this room in a long time. I'm really happy to see this. And like I just told the guys here on the front row, this is really good. But the next one we have, grab a friend and bring them. Well, I'll we'll, we'll have more. I'll tell you what, you bring more people, and I'll get more chairs in here. What's that, what's that movie about the uh, baseball? Build the field, and they'll come. Oh, yeah. so you bring them, and we'll we'll we'll, have, we'll make room somewhere. Even if we have to go somewhere else, have a bigger meeting. Uh, but this is a great show out right now. We're really happy with it. I'm fixing to have to apologize to these two right here because I'll go ahead and tell you point blank. I didn't think this many people would show up. I really didn't. But I'm glad to see it. And you go out and wait until you find everybody. I was wrong. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Facebook Live. Facebook Live. We don't like this Facebook Live. But we do appreciate y'all being here. And like I said, they, they took this upon themselves to set this up. And they want to get out to the community and get, you know, get to know these people. Like I said right now, Terry, she's probably one of the best PR persons we ever had. She gets out here. And I won't lie to you, we ride the city a lot. And there's not a day go by that somebody don't ask me, where's Terry? Well, I think she's here, but she might be off, we're not sure. But, you know, she gets out and she talks to the people. And we've got other good officers do the same thing. I'm just not going to brag on her, I'm going to brag on all of us. But again, I do thank y'all for being here. And I'm going to shut up and I introduce them and let them take back over. And never mind, here comes more people. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, brother. What do you think? <laughs> You ought to vote for me. <laughs> what do you think? I'll vote. <laughs> I, I, like I just told him, I'm proud of this. I really am. I really am proud of it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I wish I'd see you in, in the city in the city council meetings. <laughs> anyway, I'll turn it back over to the lieutenant. And, uh, All right. Once again, I'm Lawrence Etheridge. I normally tell everyone to call me LT, which was confusing because they thought they were talking about Lieutenant Schrafer, they were talking about me. So, a couple of things, like the Chief said, please, if you're having an emergency, call 911. 
There are times we get phone calls and people go, well, I didn't want to call 911. No, call 911 because it does a couple of things for us. <coughs> um, not only are we just responding to calls, but for statistical purposes, uh, for myself as an investigator, it, it helps out. Because if you call, I can look at numbers, or I can look at the certain way a time, a date, something has occurred, and it may actually help me out to solve another crime. So it's very important. And, and that's your right. Another thing is, if you have a cell phone, everyone plays a surcharge um, that's required, so it's available to you. Another thing, if you have a house phone, if you have hard lines <coughs> in your house, even if you don't have a, a house phone, Federal government says that you still must be able to call out to 911. So you can actually plug in a phone and you can still dial 911. You can't call grandma or you know your boo, but you know, you can still use it for 911. So that's very important to know, okay? Because I know a lot of times very few people actually have um, anything other than a cell phone nowadays. You know, so that's very important. I want to just mention that. Now one of the things when we first, uh, this was brought to me and LT was talking to me about it and we discussed about it, burglaries, which affects everyone. Um, it affects your, 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 your safety, you know, how you feel when you come home. So we want to discuss this, why this first meeting is about those kind of issues. <coughs> we want to discuss some ways um, that will assist you in decreasing and helping us decrease it. Yes, we patrol, but no one is actually going to wait until we pull up and then kick in the door or go into your garage. They're going to sit and wait until we pass them. So it's very important that we stick together and communicate with one another. So, And I would like to say that a lot of our burglaries occur during the daytime for most people at work. But just remember, what happens if your kids are home that day from school and it becomes a home day? So, all right, so we have what is called creating awareness and maintaining momentum. This is also in conjunction of how you create a neighborhood watch. So that's where this is um, developed from. The message, develop a recruit message that includes the following information, the need. So we have one burglary, that's too many. So there's a need. Benefits to the neighborhood. At the very least, you get to know your neighbor. You get to know the person down the street. You know their children, they know your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, and that makes for a safer community. Personal benefit. You leave home, your house look good, it's safe and intact, you come home, it's the same way. Fears. Well, I don't think we run around that fearful, but still, we all have to realize that there's a lot that go on, and we want to make sure that we're safe. This is how you get involved, coming together as a community, getting to know one another, getting information, and having the opportunity to talk about some of the issues and concerns that you have. And meeting arrangements and contact information. That's one of the steps as you move into the neighborhood watch uh, phase of it. Personal interaction, <coughs> telephone calls, personal visits, neighborhood events. Once again, these are things that bring everyone together. Now, a lot of times you might know someone that's to the left or right of you, but you might not necessarily know who lives down the street. And sometimes, we all see every block, every neighborhood has that one house that causes our problems. Is that not correct? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's the person that's not laughing about it, but you know, it's, there's always one house in the neighborhood that inevitable causes a lot of the issues. That's right. Kids conjugating, um, and a lot of things sometimes just being mischievous, sometimes being a little malicious. But that, those are things that help out. One thing I can tell you as a police officer, when we know your name, it's hard for you to do stuff in front of us or we know what you do and we know your name. People kind of go elsewhere. They might go, you know, the Newman and crew commit their crimes as opposed to coming here because we know what you do. We watch you grow up, we know you, we know your name, we know your parents, we know your uncles and aunts, and that actually decreases crime. And when things do go on that fits, as they say on TV, the MO, we actually can utilize that to come find you. And we start with you. 
And so that's a big part of how law enforcement operates. So personal interaction is important. Getting the word out. These are strategies. We live in the 21st century, social media, as Chief says, but we don't want that to be used in the case of an emergency. But emails, <coughs> neighborhood association newsletters, library events, church bulletin, school newspaper, local websites, and brochures. And of course, we use things like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to get information out. I know a lot of times people will say, is, uh, what's going on in the interstate is backed up. You might get information from one of the sergeants stating they had a wreck. It's going to be backed up for a couple of hours. You might want to take an alternate route. And that's good. And so that's what we utilize. We even put pictures out there so you can see. Because sometimes pictures are worth a thousand words. So if you shouldn't text and drive. You shouldn't be on your cell phone and drive. Um, you should be hands-free and drive. But, you know, you can get that. We also part of it, when we began to move forward with the neighborhood watches, those, you have neighborhood sur surveys where you focus on identifying the issues, the resources, priorities, and obstacles. And of course, in it, you always have us as the law enforcement as a resource. That's a big re resource. Now, sometimes we can't tell you um, in terms of what might exact all the information is an uh, incident because a lot of times people will say, well, what happened? And you might feel like we're not really answering your question. And that's not anything against you, but sometimes we can't share that information because it might be in conjunction to another crime or just even as far as the Freedom of Information Act. We just can't readily give out information on certain incidents. Teamwork. Work done by a number of associates Associates usually each during a clearly defined portion, but all supporting the efficiency of the whole. We have to work together. We have to work together. It takes all of us to do our job. You all have to be our eyes and ears sometime. And I know people think, like on TV, they solve every crime in 50 minutes of commercials. Right? First 48 is only 50 minutes. But they tell you the first 48 hours is crucial. And that's true. But it doesn't, it, it operates a little bit slower in the real world. Okay? So I'm going to let you start. <laughs> one, of, one of the hardest crimes to solve, though, is, is, is property crime. It's theft. If, if, if I kick in your door and I remove something from your house and I go, then th there's not much evidence left there. Uh, so that's the reason why a neighborhood watch, neighbors uh, that understand what's going on, what's going on at your house is very important. <coughs> now, also, let me add to that, too. Who likes CSI by short hands? Who, when that show used to come on, a wonderful show, isn't it? So unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Like, D we have a rock, and we're going to get fair place off a of rock. No, it doesn't work that way. Quite a lot of You know, even when you have a footprint on a door, that's wonderful. We'll take the picture of it. But the chances of us having a... a Computer system that catalog footprints, that's not realistic. Okay? So, there are sometimes you see things on TV and it's like, why aren't y'all doing this? Because it's not realistic. You know, we're going to do everything that we possibly can to solve all the crimes that occur here, but we want you to understand areas like fingerprints on rocks. You know, if you have a car door, someone busts out a window, you say, why don't you fingerprint the car? Well, how many times have you touched the car? So who are we going to print? Your fingerprints? And then what if you you had a ticket somewhere, and we run, <laughs> we come back, and we pick you up? And you're like, I was the one robbed. <laughs> but that's how it works. So just, you know, remember those things. <clears throat> Importance of teamwork. And this is something that Chief preaches, LT preaches to us. Because we, as officers, have to stick together. We have to communicate. We have to work together. So it provides manpower for completing tasks. Just like we have people here assisting us. Opportunity to support and encourage one another. That's extremely important. An environment which promotes creativity. A lot of times, as the investigators, I might sit down with the other officers and talk about different levels of how I might want to look at a crime that's been committed. Because I don't have all the ideas and I don't have all the thoughts. Everyone brings their talents to the table in their years of experience. 
So it's important that we actually work together and talk with one another. <coughs> Signing roles. Outlines clearly defined tasks and responsibilities. Establish authority and boundaries. And this is also within the neighborhood watch. Because when you create the neighborhood watch, they'll have a block captain. They'll have individuals who have certain responsibilities <coughs> so that we make sure that each individual owns the same. So it's very important. <coughs> And this is what it looks like. You have the law enforcement liaison, liaison the area watch coordinator, block captain, and watch member. <coughs> the responsibilities of the law enforcement liaison, police law enforcement and citizens, <coughs> offers training and information, provides guidance, support, and motivation to neighborhood <coughs> watch groups, and provides technical assistance. The neighborhood watch coordinator. Serves as a liaison between group members, between members, law enforcement civic groups, and block captain. Arranges neighborhood crime prevention training, obtains and distributes crime prevention materials, and involves others in specific crime prevention projects. <coughs> the neighborhood watch block captain serves as spokesperson for the group, organize meetings, maintain lists of participants, designate work assignments, distributes material. Serves as a liaison between members and law enforcement. The neighborhood watch members, very important. Tens meetings, report suspicious or criminal activity, help recruit new members, practice safety measures at home and in community, support <coughs> block captain and other leaders in their roles. Give an example. Who in here have an escape route, like say for instance, and practice it if you have fire in your household? We have two, two people. people. See? Three. Three. Especially if you have small children. When I say small children, I mean even teenagers, because you have to understand, when situations occur, people begin to panic. And so if you had to practice these things, then what are you going to do in a time of emergency? It's kind of like if you have someone that's disabled, or they're not, they don't have that much mobility. If you have an incident at home, <coughs> how do you handle that? So this, these are also part of what we're talking about as far as decreasing crime in our community, developing neighborhood watch, and communicating with one another and law enforcement. Watch activities. Keeping an eye on neighbors' homes while they're away. Communicate with neighbors. Yes, sir. I got, I got one. Facebook. Don't put that you're on vacation in Florida when you're, when you're gone. That's telling everybody. That your friends and contacts on Facebook, hey, they're gone. Yeah. Come get it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's true. People do it and they get robbed. They get burglarized. I'm in Columbus having dinner. Come on to my house. <laughs> 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 Takes me an hour to get home. You got 30 minutes to get in and get out. <laughs> Practice safety and security measures at home. Keep eye open for suspicious individuals. Provide support to neighbors who are victims of crime. And a lot of times, I know people feel like I shouldn't call 911, but if you see someone walking down the street and you know they don't live there, no one's at home, most of the people who live on your block is at work, call. We'll come check them out. If they're not doing anything, that's fine. At least we have identified who they are. Our contact, we videotape it, we'll probably run their name, so we have at least a starting point if something happens later on. Because a lot of times foot traffic is that's mostly our burglaries are done through foot traffic. <clears throat> Cutting through backyards, the little path that they think sometimes we don't know that are here, um, and those kind of things. Reporting persons. Characteristics of an effective watch group. Informal, comfortable atmosphere. Discussion involves everyone that stays on task. You can disagree. Okay. Decision making aims for consensus. Feedback is frequent and comfortable, and assignments are clear and accepted. Now, this is very important. What is suspicious activity? It can refer to incidents, events, individuals, or circumstance, circumstances that seem unusual or out of place. That could almost be anything, couldn't it? <coughs> you see a young man that you've never seen ride on the skateboard in the neighborhood. Might not be doing anything. Might be. Another thing I want to dispel at this moment. When you call 911, 
and I know I've worked in other jurisdictions and people feel like we give them out your name. Like, say your name is Jim Todd, you live at such and such street and your phone number. We don't actually give that information out to anyone. Okay, so you don't have to worry about someone coming back saying, it was you that called on me, I know it. Now, if you tell them, yep, I did, well, that's on you. <laughs> I didn't tell them, okay? Because they're not going to get the information that we get over the radio and on our um, laptops and our vehicles. So that's something that, I mean, I've had to, and I'm pretty sure Chief and LT, I've had to deal with that over and over again, explain it to people. We don't give our information when you call 911, okay? It's not really available. Please, if you need law enforcement, Facebook is a good tool, and, and, and a lot of people message me. But if you need the police, you need to call 911. If I'm in the movies, I'm not going to get that Facebook message for two hours. So uh, take that into account. What's your report? Suspicious activity, people in vehicles, illegal activity, unusual events or incidents, and dangerous situations. Another thing, we don't expect you all to know what probable cause is. If it looks suspicious, call me. And I'll say this, and I, I, I don't run anybody but me, but if an officer comes out and they act like they're irritated that you called the police, then you need to contact the, the sergeant, the lieutenant, or the chief. Because that, that's our job, to answer 911 calls. It's not our job to get angry because, you know, you call because this person is walking up the street. That's our job. That's what we get paid to do, to answer 911 calls create self-initiated activity. So <clears throat> I'm telling you myself, I'll say it again, and I'll say it in front of anyone. If they come out and they're unprofessional, you need to let them know. Because that's our job. Or let me and the chief know. That's what I mean. Right. Not the person on <laughs> Yeah, no, don't, 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 don't confront them. Yes. <laughs> and let, let, let the um, <clears throat> lieutenant and chief know. Okay. But do remember, we're human too. So we have personal problems, we have deaths in the family, we have marital problems, we have children problems, we have all that. And then we still have to come to work and, and, and we have to try to, to, to solve all the problems of the community and it's almost impossible. But if you do, come, if you do file a complaint, it will be looked into. I'll, I'll show you that. And I will say that we all wear body cams now, all the officers. So if you do have a complaint, we can pull up the body cam, we can look at the footage, we can find out exactly what was said. And, and the last caveat on that, being stern and firm is not unprofessional. <laughs> That's true. Not everybody right. has the same attitude as me and the chief or Joel. <laughs> right. We'll talk to anybody and, and, and cut up with everybody. So. Not all officers are like that. Right. So That doesn't make it wrong it's just because they're stern. Right. I want to keep that in mind. All right, reporting suspicious persons. Gender is very important, and sometimes you can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I mean, sometimes you might see someone with long hair from behind. You don't know. So, race, same thing sometimes. The age is approximate. Height and weight, approximate. Hair color and style, complexion, speech. Scars, tattoo, facial hairs, glasses. You know, for a law enforcement officer, this has been the greatest tool to catch people. Because you can't say if you have a big star on your neck and you held up somebody and robbed them and then you run down the street, we catch you. And they say, well, all I remember is they had a big star on their neck. They say it wasn't me. Well, I think the, the two that just escaped, uh, that murdered the two correctional officers, I mean, if you saw their pictures and you saw them walking down the street, I'm pretty much sure you would say, hey, that's probably him. Right. So, general pants <clears throat> and clothing. And we know that when you are in an elevated sense of state of being, sometimes you're not going to get it right. We get that. But you, you know, just give the best that you can, the best description that you can. Report a vehicle, same thing. Different types of vehicle. What type of, can anyone tell me what type of vehicle this is? Okay. <laughs> and I guess, you know, probably sometime in the South, identifying the truck is probably almost easier than identifying the car. Because what is this? 
And, and the white truck, if you call and you were to give the description that uh, uh, white truck just left Canterbury and uh, is headed north on 29, that may be enough. But if you have the uh, company's logo on there, that's definitely in probable cause for us to be able to pull it over. Once it makes it to the interstate, if it took us three or four minutes to get there and it made it to the interstate, well, how many white trucks are on the interstate? That, that's not really enough probable cause to make a stop. Right. And direction of travel is very important. Like if it leaves out of the subdivision, did it go left or right? That's very helpful to us. Same thing, quarter vehicles, mate, like Ford, Chevrolet, Honda, model, escort, impala, pickup truck, the year, color, and those might vary sometimes. License plate number and state, might be able to see, might not. Bumper stickers, damage, dents, or lettering. Direction of travel. If you don't know east, you know left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Occupants, one male, one female, by high school age. You know, if you can tell. And we're gonna ask all those different questions so that we have to know <coughs> that the officers in the surrounding areas can respond. Because a lot of times what happens, our 911 <coughs> communication center will actually <coughs> communicate with the surrounding areas and put out information. And that's how we catch people a lot of times. And there's always a delay. Think about how long it would take, really, if something happened in your subdivision for you to pick up the phone and you to call. Now they're continuing to drive. And you call 911, they say, what's your emergency? Well, I want to report a uh, Honda uh, Civic, blue in color. It just left my subdivision, and it, 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 it took a left. For them to take down the information, take down your name, for them to key up the radio and call us, for us to answer, for them to give it to us, and then for us to actually respond from wherever we may be responding from. So there's always going to be that two to three minute delay. So that's the reason why direction and, and, and as much as you can possibly get is so important. Reporting locations. Provide exact address as possible. <clears throat> provide cross streets or closest major intersections. In rural areas, provide county road numbers or mile markers along state or federal highways. <coughs> provide landmarks that can, be, that can be recognized by law enforcement or emergency responders. And describe the location with as much detail as possible. And I would say for anyone who's actually in an emergency situation, the last one is really the most important one because you're not going to look at the bomb markers and all of that. But if you can just describe the location with as much detail as possible, if you can just give us any information, we'll work with it. And that's important. You're not getting a grade on it. There's no pass or fail. So you never have to feel any pressure about that. <laughs> How to report. 911. Call the police department and the sheriff's office. Now sometimes we get people who will actually call 10 digits as opposed to 3 digits. In other words, I called the police department and no one answered the phone. Anyone ever done that since y'all lived here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that right there. Now we're still battling the phone issue. Right. Even today. Even today we're battling it. Yes. Even in the daytime, when you know that there are people here, if you're dealing with emergency situations, suspicious person, suspicious activity, call 911. Can I call 911? I don't even get Kelly County. I get Trooper County. Trooper County? Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. You just drop your cell phone. You, it yeah. all depends on where, what tower it is. I had to call one night and they, it was Trip County, so they said they were transferring me to Cody County, and then they sent me to the Sheriff's Office instead of County County, County 911. Then they hung up on me, then I had to call back. I did trip county. That's the reason why having the non-emergency number is so important, because if you dial the non-emergency number, it's going to go straight to 911, regardless of where you're at. Right. And that's the issue that uh, people have when, with cell phones. Your positioning dictates what cell tower it will bounce off of. So that's something that you got to keep in mind. So, but still, if you're in an emergency situation, they're still going to send it where it needs to be. Even if you hang up, they're still going to send, hey, we got, it's in this area, and we'll respond to the area. Provide a detailed description. One, I'm sorry, one, one other thing. If you call 911, they have the ability to track your cell phone. If you call the police department, we don't have that ability. So if you're on hold, you're disconnected, something bad happens while you're trying to call our, our local uh, police department, <clears throat> we, would, we might not know who you are or, or never find you. 
Very important. I'll skip, all right, skip that one, excuse me. Tell the call taker what happened and the exact location of the occurrence. And sometimes you won't be able to get that out. You know. So that's where cell phones are probably kind of good. Even hardwired, the, the home phones that most people used to have back in the day, if it stays off the hook, they use the uh, phone number to try to dictate your location. You provide a detailed description of individuals or vehicles. Very important again. Remain on the phone and stay calm. Well, that's subjective. <laughs> Be prepared to answer follow-up questions. Now, this is where I think sometimes people get a little frustrated. Because when you're talking to the call taker, you think they're just talking to you. But what happens, the call taker is taking the information and typing to the dispatcher who actually give us the call. So it's a process. It goes in steps, but it's all working co concurrently with one another. So I know a lot of times people get upset, like, why are you still talking to me? Why didn't you get them to call? Their job is to take down the information that's call taken. The dispatcher will actually dispatch the call because the computer system is all the same. So that information <clears throat> comes to that dispatcher's uh, uh, tape monitor, and they dispatch the call. So don't get frustrated if they're still talking to you. The police are coming. Target hardening for the home. And I know you're probably going to see some words that look kind of strange, but this basically details how do you prepare yourself for an emergency? <coughs> All right, statistics. More than 51% of residential burglaries occur during the daytime while homeowners were away at work or running errands. Kind of like where we live in Bradford. Seven out of every 10 burglaries were of residents. <coughs> you, everyone, if you burglarize a house, you, you know that there is some property there of value, even if it's just what you care about. So. Target hardening increases security and decreases the victimization. <laughs> Burglary is a crime opportunity. The more obstacles that are in the way, the less likely that the criminal the crime will occur. One of the easiest ways is lock your door. So basic home target hardening techniques: doors, locks, windows, lighting, lighting, lighting. Excuse me. Appearance: alarms, garage. Helpful hints. We're going to talk about that garage blanket. Yes. I see so many people in the city that have garages, and it is so full of all kind of goodies that you've acquired, and you leave and leave the door open. Leave the garage up. And then you come back, the weed eater gone. <laughs> <laughs> the tremors are gone. The go kart's gone. All right. And back in the day, everything went to a pawn shop. Not necessarily that doesn't happen anymore because so many people get caught by taking it to the phone shop and we have to go match it up and, and all that. <coughs> Nowadays, it goes to the drug houses. That's right. And that's where it gets pawned off at. Or they sell it on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Craigslist. Yeah. Craigslist is a big one. That's what people sell. Social media helps and hurts at the same time. How many people have pictures of all their guns? Their, their lawnmowers, their uh, the pictures of the serial number. With a cell phone, you can do all of these. You take a picture of yourself, your, 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 your uh, serial numbers, your models. But here's something that most people don't have. If I go buy my son a Huffy bicycle, it's going to have a model number, but it's not probably going to have a serial number. But if I make a little mark on it somewhere uh, that's not obvious, maybe up under the handlebars or something, that way I can tell the police, uh, hey, it's a Huffy. 10 speed, it's blue, and I also got my initial right up under right here. Guess what? If we see it down the road, somebody riding on it, and they can't say, well, we bought that. Wait a minute, did y'all put this other mark on here? So, yes, something. Yes, ma'am. She has a bunch of time. Okay. Okay. Doors. All exterior doors should be metal or solid wood and have strong door hinges on the inside of the door with hidden or non-removable pins. I don't think we have to worry about that. I, I would hope no builder put the pins on the outside of the door. <laughs> 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 they did. They did. <laughs> you should get your money back. So. <laughs> we would have to arrest them for bad work. <laughs> 
it's all good to call it the dead bolt locks on all exterior doors and any doors from attached garages. And this is very important, the dead bolt. Nothing is going to keep a person out, but you want to give yourself a fighting chance. You definitely want to give yourself a fighting chance. Now, I don't know, y'all look pretty young. Y'all probably not as old as I am. But I remember those little doors where you used to turn that little round knob that had the little lip to it. It was so easy to get in those. So easy, you know. I'll give you another one. I, me and my wife continuously, uh, we'll, we'll leave our house and we'll lock our keys and, and, and inside. So I just lift up my doggy door and go up in there, you know, reach up under it and unlock the door and go in. There. So I mean, there, there, there's a lot of ways that thieves can get into your house that, that you might not even think about. Good to know where your keys are in the house. <laughs> and that's something that you have to think about because a lot of times it's juveniles who are doing certain types of crimes. And sometimes people, adults put juveniles up to do these crimes because they fit in these areas. <clears throat> they are able to squeeze into a door, and, you know, a doggy door or something and get up and unlock the door. So, very important. I, I don't know what it's like to have a doggy door, but I would assume you have the capability to lock it. I would hope. Well, you do if you, if you do. Okay. Well, I, let me say this. As a police officer in Greenfield, if you have a doggy door and somehow some other kind of animal get into your house, I ain't coming. So, <laughs> yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to send someone else. I'm sorry, but I don't plan this. So, please lock your door because I would hate to have to come out there and go, yeah, that is a raccoon. And we both standing there. <laughs> no, I'll do my best. I'll do my best to toss someone and get the fish from the <laughs> But yes, the door is dead bolt lock. Very important. And even having a secure lock on the door for the animals. Very important. Window locks of ours may be used to increase security, especially on all windows that are accessible from the ground. And that's probably very important, but very few people have basements in the south. You know, but if you do, and you have side windows, and sometimes you have, I know some houses are built where the trap door, where you can go down to deal with the plumbing and things like that, you need to make sure that's secure. <coughs> so. Lighting, interior, use automatic timers all of the time, not just when you're away. Utilize specialty lighting in high security areas, very important. You know, sometimes it gets on a routine, we stop doing things, but you want to make sure that you stay consistent with your safety. Have a time. Exterior lights. Install around doors, porches, windows, garage, and all points of entry. Motion detectors are good. Illuminate house and grounds. Increase visibility and eliminate hiding places. The last thing a murderer wants to do is feel like he's being lit up for the world to be able to see him. Lighting is very important. And appearance, direct visitor traffic by design. <clears throat> and a lot of times, if you have a fence, you want to keep that fence locked so that someone can't, because that's definitely an easier way to go about behind the house, kick in a sliding door, get the stuff, and leave out. If you got gates locked, I'm going to tell you, burglars are lazy. Yes. They don't like climbing over fences, they don't like having to carry heavy stuff very far. They want the easiest thing, the quickest way to get in and out. So if you got a gate, lock your gates. If you don't have a lock on it, think about putting one. <clears throat> Plant thorny bushes. Bushes. Now that's a good one. Yeah, I got that's because you know the bushes. And for some reason, they hurt worse than anything. <laughs> Trim the shrubs and trees. This is another one. A lot of times, people forget because you want your house to look good. You have all these nice shrubs, and they're high, and they cover up your window. But what it does is give hiding places to someone who wants to break in. So even though it's daytime, they just stand there and wait until somebody goes past, and then they break the window. And it, does, it, it doesn't make a lot of noise to break the window. Okay? And now they're in your home taking your things. Cut back tree limbs. <coughs> Use landscaping to provide maximum visibility. So it's very important to have those things. <clears throat> I would say a shrub would probably need to be no higher than three feet. Three feet high. So that you can see your sight lines in your window. Of course, for your own protection, when they, if someone actually do attempt to do something as crazy as a home invasion, 
you know, you'll be able to see out the window and, and give us a direction to travel, a description, those kind of things. Alarms. Use audible on-site alarms and or flashing lights to attract attention. Now this is, you know, alarms are getting better and better and they're easier. Everyone pretty much has smartphones nowadays when you go get a phone. You can buy the type of alarms, like I was looking at one, it's a little doorbell alarm. And you just stick it by your doorbell, <coughs> and it actually is a camera. And you sync it up to your smartphone, so even if you're not home, somebody coming to the porch, you can actually see them. And uh, this is a deer camera. We bought it for the police department, and we put it out every now and then when we're having multiple occurrences at a certain location. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. I think we paid $125 for this, and uh, uh, it can be hidden pretty easily. It takes good pictures. This is the no uh, infrared, so it, it doesn't glow at all. It, it's completely black, so at nighttime you don't have a. Uh, some of them have a red glow, but but then people can see this. Um, we actually saw one burglary on Grandma Branch Road because he had internet connected to his. It was a little bit more expensive, but he had internet connected to it. So every time it triggered, it sent a picture to his phone, to his cell phone. So we actually, we didn't catch him in the act. We caught him about 300 yards down the road. We were able to make a traffic stop and, and make three arrests. Mm -hmm. So uh, inexpensive. Uh, you can put them up. You can hide them. Uh, you can set them up in many different ways to take video, to take pictures, to take multiple pictures. And it's, it's a really inexpensive way to, to help protect your property. And I know you've got cameras too. <laughs> Another thing, we don't mind extra alarm calls. That's what we're here for. Uh, I've had so many people say, well, I'm sorry. I said, oh, you can all be sorry. I'm glad it went off. All right. Yep. And, uh, we yep. have no problem answering calls. Yes, sir. You can get eight cameras. And they record all for less than four hundred dollars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's a way to go now. Cameras and you can go back and, and see everything all day long. It, yes, it happens real quick. You can see them right there. So some of them, <coughs> you got Wi-Fi. You can look at your house right then and there. Yes, I've seen it done. And, and, and you can look at it in real time and see exactly what's going on in your house at that given time. So, it's yes, very sir. important. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Another question: uh, When security cameras are set up at a residence. Does the um, company let the police department know they've set one up there so in case there is a burglary in that general area, those cameras <coughs> could be a way for them to get some additional information about a car that they have? Mm -hmm. and make them, do they let the city know that they've set up cameras? No. The, the company said no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. That's a personal thing. <coughs> when a person, a homeowner, buys like their alarm system that may come with cameras, when it comes to me, I might go out and knock on doors and talk to different people to see if they have cameras or we're home. That's when we might find out additional information. But normally, whatever information that homeowner is paying for, that's what they get. Me, I would personally like to have in my yard a sign that says, even if you don't have an alarm system, even if you can't afford an alarm system, but that have an alarm system, yes. or just, just to be safe, hey, Protected by AD&T, uh, up under video surveillance. I would want everybody in the world to know that right. because that's going to that's going to deter crime. Why would you go to some place that you good possibility <coughs> has got an alarm and a good possibility I'm on camera? Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. Based on what you were speaking on, um, our music is actually my brother-in-law's father was just killed. And what happens in the general area through the investigation, if you see something happening in your area and the police are on scene and something's happened, offer up your cameras if you have them. Yeah. Say, hey, you're welcome to look at my cameras. They may have called something. Don't just look and talk about what's going on up the street. But say, hey, come look at my cameras. You might see him leave by my house or something like that. But that's how they caught his killer. I mean, the guy ran over uh, our music minister's dad, and there was no, no clue to how it happened. They caught a security camera in the general vicinity that caught the act in, pro in, pro in process. So offer up your cameras for their use. Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to you. Well, ma'am, yeah, here. Yes, we, my husband and I just put security cameras at Bonnie Castle, and that's right downtown. Yes, ma'am. So that's strip there, <coughs> cars passing by. Okay. It's good enough. So what's good for us today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might watch you just to see who's running that. Because I know more than I don't want to control. Folks just won't stop. They just won't stop. So many tickets.
ticket. Yes. <laughs> Nobody stops that stop, so I go ahead and pay right now. Right. Right, right. there on. Right. right. Stop. I need to go. I'm sitting down on count of two or three hundred calls a day running that stop thing. Oh, we, we know. We know. Trust me. I sat out there and I'm sitting there in a marked patrol car and folks still going, you stop playing. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. And, I, and I, will, I will do want to say something off subject that we get a lot of complaints throughout the city for, for, for things like speeding and other things and running a stop sign. And you may think that, hey, they're really not doing anything, but really we get a lot of complaints all around the city. So so maybe we might focus on, on one spot for two or three days and, and then we're gone again going to somebody else's spot. Um, so, so don't think that we don't care or, or that we're not trying or, or, or that we're not going to do anything about it. And our, the last part about these cameras, many cities have cameras up on the, on the city streets, like main thoroughfares. So as a community, you all might want to think about that as well, because it's helpful in terms of solving crime, dealing with traffic accidents, and things like that. And I do want to say something about speed. We can't change speed limits. Uh, the, the mayor and the council has to change the speed limits and it has to go through a process. These subdivisions, me and the chief, we try to ride all the subdivisions three times a day. The speed limit in the subdivisions are 30 miles an hour. So why would you get on the Grange Highway or the Grange Street and, and, and be able to go 25 miles an hour and then turn into a subdivision where kids are and playing speed and speed up to 30 miles an hour? That makes no sense to me. So, consideration. We have, we have discuss that with other people so it's something that you know like he said we can't change the speed limits we can make recommendations it has to go from there and I, I will tell you right now we've talked about a lot of these subdivisions that we've been calling people do go pretty fast these subdivisions so people my house every day yeah. well well get in your car and try to do the speed limit in your subdivision <coughs> Yours is, yours is different because yours has got them two straight away, so yeah, it doesn't feel so bad. But you get some of the other ones, and you try to do just the speed limit, and you'll realize, oh my God, we're going way too fast. Right. I want to tell you, we've, we've done it. We've got it in probably every subdivision here, and I try to do 30 miles an hour in every subdivision. It's scary. Because <laughs> you get just about 30 miles an hour, and you better be hoping you can stop quick. Right. Maybe there's a lot. we got a bunch of kids. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but we do get out here and we try to we try to slow people down. Like I said, it's just kind of hard to do, but we try our best. Um, Long Oak Road over here, I'm going to wait to you right now. I would have never dreamed that people would come down Long Oak Road like they do. Yeah. But, uh, I think Terry just oh, yeah. I think oh, no. Terry just left the other day. She sat in your driveway and I'm going to tell you what, those folks fly. Uh, <laughs> West, Grant, was West Grant was straight over here. We sat over there when uh, last week, the week before. Last Wednesday, whatever it was. I mean, people just, you wouldn't believe it. So. But we are trying to get out and try to do everything we can. Um, you know, we're, we're really trying. And, uh, I do appreciate it. And I want to say this again because we've had some people come in after we started. I appreciate the showing right here. Uh, as I told him earlier, I never expected this many people here. Uh, I told him right off the bat, if we got 10 here, I'd be really happy. <laughs> and to be truthful with you, there's 35 people here. That means a lot to us for y'all to come and listen to this right here. Let's put it on right here. So we do appreciate that. And, you know, we hope to do this more often, try to get more people involved also. Because this is what's going to have to say to get people involved in the community. Because I'll tell you right now, if you don't get involved, you'll have a complaint. I'm sorry, go ahead. No. All right. So, alarm. Post alarm signs on the property, like LT says, stickers on the windows. It decreases crime. It decreases burglary. So you want to put those signs up. Even if you don't have an alarm system or video surveillance, I would suggest you still put it in there. Um, we know at <coughs> holiday time, like Christmas, you definitely uh, want to be vigilant on you know, individuals riding around the communities, looking, just driving through because you know people are buying things. Easy pickings. Make sure your alarm is monitored 24 hours a day. We know technology is getting better, so you have the capability of being monitored by a company and having it come to your smartphone, like they said, or even a laptop. Use detectors at all interest points and motion detectors in high priority areas, like in the rear of your home. I know a lot of times we have a lot of subdivisions that back up to woods, and it's difficult if a person is in the woods. We all understand that, especially at night, your eyes adjust to the darkness. But if I get out of light, 
as an officer responding to a situation, it's going to take me a few moments for my eyes to adjust. That gives that person a head start. So you have to think about those things. Those things are important. A lot of times, as police officers, we have certain techniques that we use when we're approaching a home depending on the call. And I'm not going to share all that with you all, but there are things that we do to decrease letting someone know that we're coming. Unfortunately, and we're kind of blessed here by having newer vehicles, Chief and them have done a great job of that, but a lot of times people can, people know us by the suspension. They hear us coming. You know, so those are things that, there are things that we do to help decrease that so we can respond to incidents like that and take people in custody. Garages, my favorite. <coughs> Always lock the door to the house and the attached garage. That doesn't happen a lot. Just doesn't happen. And we have got to close the garages, the door. When at home, I always park your car in the garage with the garage door shut. Now, I know sometimes that's not possible, but close the garage door. Install automatic openers that will allow you to stay in your car until safety park in the garage. We get a lot of times, and I get a lot of reports, someone said, well, I just walked over to my neighbor's, <coughs> it was over about an hour, and now I have this item missing, whatever it may be, from the garage. Close the garage. Take away that opportunity from that individual who, who decides this is just a crime of opportunity. It's up. I'm going to go in here and get it. Close your garage. It's very important. We get that a lot, unfortunately. So please make sure that you are closing your garage. If you go somewhere, even if you like run up to the Dollar General for a few, <coughs> the garage door, please. Decrease the opportunity for crime to occur. Ah, hello. Is anybody in there? When you're not at home, make it look like somebody's there. That's right. Leave a radio on. Close curtains but leave lights on. If on vacation, have a neighbor pick up your newspaper and mail. I know when I was a kid, when we would go down south, I grew up up north, my grandmother would let the neighbor know. They would pick up the mail. They sometimes would go in the house sometimes because they were real close. Check and make sure everything is concerned. We kind of got to get back to talking to one another. You know, know who your neighbor is. Build up a rapport with them. You know, sometimes we like them. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> I understand that. But you still, it's unfair to think that if a person that you don't like live next door to you and they get burglarized, what makes you think it won't be your turn soon? Just because you dislike them? The burglar not going to come to your house? So, you know, we need to stay where we're, we're working together. Either you don't have to talk to them. I'm not saying you have to go and, you know, break bread with them. But you still want to keep an eye out. And that's very important. So make sure your home looks like it's lived in. And right now, we're such a small department still that, that you can still call us and we'll do a security check on your residence if you're going to be gone for a extended period of time. You just tell us, hey, we're going to be leaving here, we're going to be coming back here, this is what should be in the driveway, uh, these two vehicles might come over and their names are so-and-so, they might be feeding my dog, they might be feeding my cat, they might be getting my mail. Uh, so those are things that you can still do with our department that you can't do in like a bigger department like Coyote County or Green PD. They just don't, there's no way. And I've even had, since I've been working here, people have kind of got upset, like, I'm just here checking on them. Okay, but I know they're gone. And I don't know who you are, so that's why I'm checking you out, because I know who lives here, and they're not here at this time. That's good. So yeah. that's very important. I have had a couple of alarm calls while I've gone to a house, and I don't know everybody in the city. And, and if you're the homeowner, don't get offended because I ask you for your ID. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, don't get offended. And that's why this meeting is important. I get to look at you and you get to look at me. So now I know, you know, I see that you live in the city. Now, I may not recognize your name and it may take a couple of times, but that's what we're talking about, building up that rapport, that we're a small enough agency to be able to do that kind of thing. Make a list and check it twice. Make a list of your property. Make your property, mark your property with ID number, take pictures of expensive items, and make sure you have current insurance coverage. It's like homeowners, renters, um, if you rent, you want to have insurance for that so that if something do happen, you're covered. 
A lot of times, unfortunately, you know, you see people, they, they might be renting a home or lease option to buy, and this is an area that's not covered. And it's, 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 what can you do? You know, you want to get their stuff back, but, you know, if it's easy to carry items, it's difficult. And I'm going to tell you, in this day and time, honestly, if it's a pick and carry, it's going to be hard to find. Because like LT said, they don't go to pawn shops anymore. It's so easy to go out. Who knows what Instagram is? Exactly. Only, no, not the majority. But it's so easy to post a picture on Instagram and someone say, hey, I want to buy it. I mean, we had, there was an incident of a young man in Meriwether County posted a picture of a, um, a, a motorcycle, a little um, motorcycle, and he went all the way from Meriwether County all up to Monroe County, and they actually got murdered. But that's what people do. There was a young man who used to sell sneakers. He was 14 years old. His actual schoolmate shot and killed him. So these things happen. So they don't just run down to the uh, pawn shop because they know we check pawn shops. It's easy to connect with someone on, on social media and sell an item. They don't go to pawn shops anymore. So just remember that. So you want to make sure that you take pictures of those items and that you consider valuable, that you which is everything that you pay for. So, animal patrol. Consider a four-legged burglar alarm. <coughs> Burglars avoid homes with dogs. Beware of dog sign may still deter a burglar. So that's another sign that you can put out, along with your, you have the ADT, a burglar alarm, video surveillance, and those kind of things. You know, very important. So, very helpful. All right. That's the end of our slide. Um, any questions? Oh, I must say I did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, we were a few minutes late when we started the presentation, so you might have already covered this. Yes, sir. But is the city making a joint um, in neighborhood watch committee? What? What actually? And I'm not going to speak. I can actually let Chief. That's that one. <laughs> but actually, that's where we're at. We want to make sure we're actually going to start coming out to the different subdivisions and start working on those, those, those neighborhood watches. So we have to have, you know, the block um, watch captain, the liaison, law enforcement. We've got to get a person, which might be me or whoever uh, chief says it is, and the watch member. And so we have to have meetings, and we'll go through that process. <coughs> so that's something that we're working towards. <coughs> okay, well, I've, I've just thought of something. Um, in September, we're having a Rampfield Chili and Blues Festival. It's going to be on Main Street. Same footprint as last year. Mm -hmm. If the police department wanted to set up a booth there and sign up people that want to join a neighborhood watch group, that's good. they could do that. Every day when we're out, we try to talk to at least three or four new people, and it's, it's really working out pretty good because you know we're, we're meet people in the community um, and let them understand. You know that we're here for you. Like we said earlier, you know, uh, face and I have to keep going back. This Facebook is great, but out here talking to people is a lot better. I mean, we can touch a lot of people on Facebook. But I'm gonna tell you what, I much rather come talk to you in person than I had to do anything on Facebook. That way, you learn me and I learn you. And that's what we're trying to do in the community is get, you know, getting people in the community back together again. I mean, you know, I've always heard that the, the nosy neighbors, people don't like nosy neighbors. Let me tell you something. Sometimes your nosy neighbor can be your best friend. I'm a nosy neighbor. Me too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know get, out to talk, get out and talk to people. And, and, and like I said earlier, don't, be, don't ever hesitate to call us for anything. I mean, you know, that's what we're here for, to serve and protect. And it don't it don't bother us one minute to come out there. It's not going to kill none of us. Yes, sir. 
Well, she was talking about she's a nosy neighbor. I don't, nose is one thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my neighborhood because if I see something that's on well, out that's of place, what I mean. right? I mean, I know what you're saying, but I guess I'm nosy too, man. Because I run people off from the, you know, they'll lie and tell people, and I live on the other side of something. I say, I'll go down and tell them you're lying. You got to go. You know, and, and sometimes just care care about others' homes just like you would your own, and be willing to step up and say something about it. You know. Well, we were in your neighborhood. It was about two weeks ago. Uh, a strange individual was kind of walking around, kind of find out he did live there, but he had a medical problem. And this lady, she says, I really don't want to bother y'all, but you know, it just don't seem right. I'm going to tell you what, you're not bothered. Like we tell you, you're not bothered. Give us a call. In fact, we ended up getting him medical help. That's, that's not bad it was. He needed medical help. Oh, I remember that, right? Yeah. He's actually with us at church now. Well, good. Doing, trying, trying to help out. Uh, so we got a big representative here, about 20 of us. You know, we, we're connecting with y'all. Right. And, uh, and I, I will tell you that we do appreciate what you've done for this community here because you have people made well, you know, the day y'all came to him, he came to my house. Good. He had just left my house when y'all got him. He came looking for me. Good. And I was at work. But yeah, y'all did a good thing about picking him up. I appreciate that. And that's the big thing right there. Don't ever, you know, don't ever think you're being nosy like that. Let us know. Anything goes on, anything don't look right. You'd be surprised, you know, people call us and say, you know, we just happened to see this. Uh, I'll tell you what happened last week. When I tell the story, I'll be through. Last week, I had a man come up and talk to me, and he told me this is exact words. He said, last night, I heard my neighbor screaming and hollering. I know he's just beating the devil out of her. I said, I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, well, did you call the police? I didn't want to bother y'all. I said, I looked at him. I want to tell you something. I said, let me tell you something. He may be his wife, too. He don't want to. <laughs> Come to find out, it was your neighbor that beat her last night. And if you would have called, we could have come and maybe done something about this. Well, I just didn't want to bother y'all. Well, call 911. I mean, like I said earlier, you know, we pay tax money for that. Y'all pay tax money for that. You know, it's not going to us to come out there. Well, be nosy. You know, be truthful with you. That right there can help people. Don't ever hesitate. You know, if you see something you don't think's right, call us. Anything within it? No, I just want to say that uh, I started here in 1993. We had five officers. Uh, 23 years later, we have 12. The community's gone from 1,200 people, I think it was back in 1993, to I think the mayor said 35, 36, 3,600 now. So the, the community has really grown. Uh, the department has grown, and I think that this is one of the best departments that. Uh, Brad had a long time. Yeah, so. I agree. Yeah. Yep. And we thank y'all. Yeah. I'll tell you one other thing. We have some good experience here. I'm just telling my age right now. Uh, I'm sitting here while I go trying to figure out how long I've been in law enforcement 37 years. Okay. Wow. So, you know, he's been in how long? Well, 21. So 21 I got out of here for two years after I left Maryland County. How long have you been here? 25. He's been. So we've got experience here. Uh, we got another officer. She's been in law enforcement for 22 years. Larry Harris. Larry's has been in. Ooh. Larry's about almost the same thing I have. So we've got experience here. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have these guys here. I mean, you know, y'all might not know this, but uh, he was a major in another department, and now he's our investigator here. He was an investigator in a, in a huge department. We're very fortunate to have him here. Amen. Uh, Cliff, he was a uh, lieutenant, he was in charge of the SWAT team. I mean, you know, we've got experience in this city right here that, you know, here goes again, I don't know that much about Grant World, I don't think he's ever had this experience here before. And we've got officers here now that really care. Uh, and we're trying our best to be a very proactive department. Uh, last, I was the paper lady was still here. <laughs> of course, she knows about this because she put the paper last year. Last year, Grant was rated number eight as the safest city in Metro Atlanta. That's right. Let me ask you a question. Y'all how many cities are in Metro Atlanta? Uh, There's a bunch of them. And to be rated number eight, that is great. That's number great. eight out of 13 counties. All the cities in 13 yeah. counties Metro yeah. Atlanta. To be number yeah. eight is high. So that is really good. So, you know, I can't take all the credit. It's these guys right here. We are very fortunate. I was very fortunate when I got here. And how I got here was really strange. I was asked to come here to try to help do things like that. When I got here, I was very fortunate to be able to go out and get people to come here with this experience and that really want to come here and work this city. And, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to be here. I've met a lot of good people here. I enjoy it here. To be truthful with you, 
I was, I was kind of enjoying retirement life. I'm, I'm really enjoying it now. I'm glad to be back at work. I enjoy doing here. I enjoy coming out talking to people. Uh, he gets me stable all the time. He's a good man. I appreciate it. Uh, he's on the phones earlier. He told me today, he's tried to call me four or five times, and he said after four rings, some lady says, thank you, and hangs up. So our phone system, we've got a little problem with the phone system right now. We're working on it. But, you know, we're really trying. But the biggest thing is, you know, we, we love to see this right here. I'd like to see this when we do this again, have twice as many people here. Like I said, the more we can have, the better off we are. And the more people come like this right here, y'all can meet them and, and, and learn the people in this community. Because if you don't get involved, you really don't have a complaint. That's one thing I can say. Uh, there's a lot of people want to sit around here and say, this is a problem, that's a problem, this is a problem right here. But nobody wants to, you know, to get together. I told people when I first came here two and a half years ago, I've talked to a lot of people, and there's a lot of people here want the same thing to happen, <coughs> excuse me, but they just don't get together and do it, and they can't do it by themselves. We've got to work together as a community to do it, and it's just like us right here. If we don't work together, we might as well just give it up. But, you know, we've got a very good proactive department right here now, and like I said, I'm going to brag on them because I'm proud of them. I really am proud of them. <coughs> like I said, it's not me that's doing the work, it's them. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to come here and, and, and bring the people we have here. And, you know, I just, I just like to keep them here, you know, as long as possible and keep going like it is. So, is, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. I told you that when you talk. I don't want you to talk tonight. <laughs> yes, sir, go ahead. I'm sorry. Enough time, Me? No, sir, you go ahead. I'm not having you here. Okay. Uh, there was a police committee meeting a week ago, and Chief got up and said he was losing two people. Yes, sir. Because <coughs> the county, for example, is paying more money. A lot more, yes. Sir. Uh, I had my alarm go off at two thirty in the morning uh, last Saturday. Yes. Sir. And one of those officers came to see me. Yes. Sir. And I talked to him for about an hour. And I would like to, everybody here, uh, I started on Facebook uh, giving you all a choice. You can have it two ways. You can have a smaller police department that the city can afford, and then perhaps the few guys that are left pay them a little bit more money so they're competitive, or you can let the city council know that you want these 12 guys and that may cost you money because your taxes may go up. But that's where your choice is, folks. And since you brought that up, I was going to be quiet. I'm going to say one other thing. The other day after the meeting, Mr. Dockerman got up here. He said exactly at this meeting what he just got through saying, that maybe the city needs to cut the department in half. And we had about a 35 or 40 minute conversation. And I ended the conversation say like this right here. Say you cut this department in half. Right now we have two, two officers working per shift. Okay, you cut this off. You cut Not this. right this second. Well, <laughs> well we're, we're kind of... We're, we're between a rock and a hard place right now. We're supposed to have two people working per shift, which we do have two people working tonight, so we're good. But anyway, say you cut it down to one officer. You have one officer working this shift, this is the city right here. All right, we have a flight call on Meriwether, Meriwether Street. That officer gets over and gets that call, okay? He goes over and gets, gets one guy locked in the handcuffs, put in the back seat of the car, and he starts heading to the Coweta County Jail. As soon as he gets on the interstate, uh, the thing I told him was, uh, him and his wife's at home, and I'm going to have to be really careful what I say here because I'm not going to say exactly what I told him. But anyway, him and his wife's at home, and all of a sudden that officer's on the interstate going north. Right now there's no protection in the city. Some man kicks in his door and goes in the house, and what I told him was, he comes in your house and tries to rape him. What happens then? <laughs> I'm not going to use the exact words he Nothing. said, but he said he would be in bad shape. And I, I said, yes, sir, you really would. More than one way then, too. Because we do have a real good uh, rapport with the county county sheriff's office. 
But let me go ahead and tell you right now, we are backing them up a lot more than they're backing us up. Hey, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're answering a lot more calls in the surrounding of the city, which uh, I don't know if y'all know it or not, but every officer in the city of Grantville is sworn Coyote County deputy. <coughs> uh, I have a real good report, Sheriff Yeager, and when I came in here, we got sat down and talked about it, and he wanted to know if I'd be willing to help the surrounding outside the city here to, to do it. Now, we don't go out and answer all the calls for them. If they call and need help, we back them up. <coughs> but we're very lucky that he swore every deputy here. <coughs> Excuse me, every officer here, I'm sorry. I was here for a while, too, so I have to back a little bit. So but that's the biggest thing. You start about taking manpower out of this city, and you don't want to back up. And that's the worst thing the city could ever think about is backing up. You want to go forward. Uh, I would like to see more people here, but right now, the officers we got here, we can do the job that needs to be done. We can. But the last thing you want to see is for anybody to cut any officers out of this city. Because when they do that, <coughs> we can go from number eight safest back to the That's right. Whatever 80th, we're 80th or 90th, whatever it is. We don't want that. Right now, we're proactive. We need to stay like we're doing. And yes, sir. We had this thing. We had it happen at our house. Yes, sir. Exactly what you're talking about. Yes, sir. The Grantville Sheriff, the Grantville Police was up at Newton Jail with the drunks. We had an alarm at the house. It took 45 minutes before County yeah, County Sheriff got there, and I told him he need to bring the Hearst when he comes. <laughs> yes, sir. Because the yes, guy, sir. if they break in my house, yes, sir. unless he gets me, they're gonna haul him off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's what we were running into before you got here, Steve. Yes, sir. Well. The majority of people don't realize really how busy we are and how often one officer, if not both, are tied up. And then if you get a call and you're waiting on the county who's understaffed, we're losing people to go to the county because they're always needing help and they pay a lot more. And, and if it's 12 miles up the road, why would somebody sell for, for, for what we're making and the benefits that we're often offering compared to going 12 miles up the road? from a lot more money and, and a lot better benefit. What's the difference in the pay? Salary pay as far as starting here and starting Coweta County? We know we can't pay Coweta County. Right. We know that. Right. We're not asking for that. Right. But the difference in pay is starting is probably about uh, $4 for 50 cents an hour difference. Uh, the main thing is their longevity pay. Right. In 10 years, a deputy at Coweta County that he makes no rank. He's just a just regular sleep leave, not a sergeant, not a lieutenant, not not anything. Can make sixty five thousand in ten years. Wow. He's going on three here as the chief, and I don't make that much. He's it, it, making less than fifty five. I'll go back. In fact, I know that y'all know exactly what the governor just did here in the state of Georgia, which I'm great. I'm, I'm grateful that he gave this the state, uh, <clears throat> troopers and everything a raise. But right now. A person can, can get out of high school or college, whatever, and to start trooper school. As soon as he gets out of trooper school, he's making forty-seven thousand dollars a year. That's after twenty something <clears throat> weeks in trooper school, he's making forty-seven thousand dollars a year. After the first year, he's been on the road. He's making more money than I'm making. And I've been doing this almost four years. And he'll have one year on That's the weird. road, and he's making. A little, more, a little more than what I'm making here. And like he said, we're not asking for you know, no. an ungodly amount of money. We just need to be semi-competitive. Somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah. At least. Yeah. You know? this, but this meeting's not here to ask. You know, ask no, 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 no we're, we're concerned here. about that too because we want to yes. keep our community to say, I want to say, I know a lot of people think crooks are stupid, criminals are stupid, but some of them are smart. <laughs> I speak from experience that I know if there's one car on <laughs> Steve can verify. If I know there's one car on I'm serious. Look, I ain't, I'm ain't. i just saying, <clears> if I know if I start someone at the end of town and that one car's going there, I can do what I want to over here. That's right. Yeah. So they ain't dumb enough not to know that. You know what I'm saying? That's why they need they need a cell a, a hole I mean a jail here or a holding cell. We couldn't afford it. We'd have to have we'd have the to pay for unreal. We'd have to pay for jailers. Uh, there's no way to sell it. Yes. 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 Just real quickly close up the part about that part. Um, definitely gonna do what you suggested. I want you to know that about when the chili um, festival. So we're gonna do that. Um, but one thing I think we're missing uh, when we talk about the safety of, of the community, 
you have to have, the officer has to be safe. Now, I've listened to everyone talk about, um, well, you can decrease the officers and pay them more money. Or, you know, kind of go what you have. At the end of the day, someone loves me. That's right. Okay. And I think it's unfair to think that my fellow officers would be in harm's way even more so just because of a few dollars. I don't think anyone in here think that a knife, a TV, a laptop is more, more precious than a life. That's right. So I, I'm a taxpayer. We all are people. I served in the military. And I think that when we go and make certain comments, we, if we're going to do that, we should look at the whole entire picture. We're human. I only know one person that came back from death. Come on. So when Amen. we're dealing with these situations Please about me. how we are going to construct our police department, yes, it may be a long-term fit in terms of working up to get to a competitive <clears throat> point. I myself have made far more than what I make right now. But I'll say this, I work for some people, for a gentleman who I think is a very good leader, and I've stayed here for that very reason, in spite of some of the obstacles I've had even coming here. Because here's the thing, we have, to include our chief, 12 police officers. Y'all don't know the stories of what people have come through while working here. I'll share my. I drove from America's Georgia when I first started here on time to a 12-hour shift to work in Grantville. I didn't have to. And I'll give you my background. I ran for sheriff in another county. So when we say these things, it kind of minimized as if I don't count. Since I wasn't the one that brought up the communication about that, I figured I'd interject and so you understand, because I'm human. When I went to hostage negotiator school, I learned that the first way to stay alive is to make them think that you're human. Give them your name. Let them know that you have children. Let them know that someone loves you. That's good. So I want you to understand, I'm not just Investigator Etheridge, the guy that sits in that desk and reads reports and come out and knock on your door. I'm, I'm a father. I'm a brother. I'm a son. And I'm an officer here. And I'm going to give you everything I got to include my life that I have done for 30 years from the military to now. And just like everybody in here want to be compensated appropriately, since I didn't bring this communication up. <laughs> so, on that note, I'm going to go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say one thing. I personally, and probably a lot of people in this room, would like to see the city increase the number of officers, yes. especially with the, with the risk of terrorists and sexual predators. I think the city needs to think about increasing the number of officers because of those two major problems that are going on right now. Well, Ms. Barry, I do want you to know, as many of you on the file of Facebook, our next class is going to be along the lines for our children and sexual predators and sexting. And, and, other issues along that line. But it will take you all that sits in these seats right. to change those individuals that sit in those seats. Right. Yeah. We can't do it. So, just wanted to share that with you all. Um, I guess anyone have any other questions? We talked about just a recap <clears throat> getting to know your neighbors, making sure you have things like dead bolts for your doors, so you might want to go back and check your doors. Make sure that the the framing is uh, sturdy, dead bolts, lighting is important, motion detectors. Get you some cameras um, to help us cameras. out. Hey, can I say uh, something about your door, too? Yes. Like, I build these type of doors for a living, and this the screw that's on that strike plate there is only like an inch screw. You can actually take a three inch longer screw, and go screw into the, the strike plate, and it'll actually hit the stud. It's still not going to make it completely kick proof, 
but it'll take them longer time to kick well, the door out. So you can put it on them screws. <laughs> yes. You can that's take them a little longer for them to kick it in, and that way it won't get it right there as much. Right. And see, that's the importance. See, he brings the expertise I didn't even know. So that's an expertise <coughs> that we learned by coming together when we talked about teamwork and those kind of things. So you might want to look at investing in, invest, investing in the signs that says that your video surveillance or have um, ADT or some type of uh, alarm company. And even if you get it, you want to have a 24-hour monitoring service. Um, and then, like I said, we're working up so that we can go into the subdivisions and work on developing and putting together the neighborhood watches. So that's where we're that's the that's where we're headed. So um, outside of that, check the Facebook page, the Grantville, the real Grantville Police Department Facebook page, the Golden <laughs> Eagle, uh, and they'll let you know, we'll alert you when the next meeting is going to occur. Uh, if days like a Monday and the seven o'clock suits you all, then you know, we'll try to keep it that way. Um, we try to be accommodating to y'all. I mean, that's the reason why we did it on a Monday. We, I mean, uh, we, we did churches on. Wednesday. I did a poll on Facebook, matter of fact. <laughs> we went on churches on Wednesday, and people had other things going on that. And he told me the best thing to do was on Monday night, so he set it up. Um, I, uh, ended up, you got anything to get yourself? No, I'm good. Ended up, I want to thank everybody for being here. Like I said, I'm shocked. I'm surprised. I think it's great. I hope we can do it again. I hope that maybe we get some more people involved with it. Um, I want to thank these two officers right here for setting this up. I think they did a great Good job. job. <laughs> when you see these officers out here, stop them and talk to them. I mean, you know, if they don't want to talk to you, slap them. <laughs> uh, no, 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 um, this is all I've ever done is public safety. I was in the military. Uh, believe it or not, I'm a retired fireman too. I was a fireman for 25 years. I've been a police officer 37 years. That makes me 107 years old. 135. Ma'am? 135. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, but you know, we, you know we, we like our job here. We like the community. We like the people. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here. So, Could I call down one point for you to come get the lamadillas and the possum out there? Yes, they might. Oh, no. Mom's just not snakes. I don't do snakes. Any of you come get the snakes. If you need a snake man, this guy around the end, Pastor Eddie, he can come get any snake you got in your yard or your house. He bred 300 at one time. He, he had a bunch of them. But again, I want to thank y'all for being here. And uh, like I said, you know, he's going to keep it on Facebook before we're going to do it again. And, you know, next time you come, bring a friend. Thank y'all. We do appreciate Thank y'all for doing it. Yes, sir. I, I got a question. Yes, sir. What can you do with 911 Scotch and call block? They got me in call block. What's the number 911? No answer. I thank you for being a nosy neighbor. Sorry.